Today is not my day. Here we go. Hey everyone and welcome back to BMX News. This is a weekly BMX News show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week within the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. And with that being said, there are a few things to talk about this week that I feel like are bigger than others. So uh, I'm gonna talk about those first and then get into everything else. First thing I wanna talk about is the sneak peek of the Shadow Plasmatic Peg. No idea what this is, no idea the specifics on it because Shadow did nothing but release a couple photos of this peg. And from what you can gather, the one photo shows using their multi-tool to tighten it on. And then there's like an adapter in there, the adapter, kind of looks like something that would thread into the the hub like it's a 3 8 bolt that threads in there and then the peg might thread onto that it's what it could look like because the end of the peg in another picture that they posted one of the two shows some sort of like square it looks like a 3 8 driver for like a socket wrench the thing that's on their multi-tool we have no idea what this is yet i'm kind of curious to see what it means because if this is a thread on to some kind of stud or adapter peg, it's going to probably come loose unless it slides that well. So I don't know. You guys can check the pictures out and let me know what you think in the comments down below because at this point, no one knows but people who are actually involved with Shadow. And they claim that the plasmatic peg is the next generation in grinding technology that's a huge claim so we're gonna find out if it's true and if they back it up after that is another product thing that i feel like people are probably going to talk about and that is the cult dakota roach one inch outer diameter bars and stem so there have been a few different companies that have done this already one of them that comes to mind right now is we the people with dan crux signature bars they're a one inch diameter at the clamping surface. So they're not one inch throughout the entire bars, they're seven eighths of an inch. And then at the clamping surface, they get bigger to one inch and then they work with a one inch stem. Also kind of curious to hear what people think about this and whether or not it actually helps. How many people break bars at the clamping surface? How many people have problems with this? Is this solving a problem that people don't actually have just so everyone can buy new bars in a stem? Kind of like the taller bars craze. That one actually had some utility. I don't know. I haven't tested it. You guys might be curious and might be excited about it. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this stuff in the comments down below. And as you can see, this is why I'm talking about these things first because like 80% of you quit watching by the end of the video. So I figured I'd hit it early before you check out of this video. The next thing that I wanna talk about is Kareem's World, What Happened to Ride BMX. This has been under wraps and asked to not be talked about for the past week and a half, two weeks now. But if you guys didn't know, Ride BMX and the publisher that owns Ride BMX were bought by another company which decided that they didn't want to continue with Ride BMX. So what this means is that people like Kurt, Jeff Z, Ryan Fudger, those guys got laid off and the whole entire Ride BMX name and everything that they do got put on hold. And basically Jeff Z, Ryan, and another guy, I think his name is Adam. I think those guys are trying to buy out the Ride BMX name but they haven't really heard anything back and it's kind of just in limbo. So if you guys want some more details on that, Jeff Z and Ryan Fudger made posts on their Instagram, which I will link in the description below. And while we're talking about things being linked, I link everything that I talk about in this video in the order that it's talked about in the description below. So check those things out if you guys want to. It really sucks that Ride isn't a thing right now. And there's a few things that we have to talk about later that Ride would have normally covered and we would have already talked about, but it just didn't happen or it didn't get posted everywhere because Ride being the biggest BMX media page didn't cover it. Now we've got people like Kurt bringing BMX Union back. It looks like Dig is really trying to push and post more and more stuff. Vital is just doing what Vital does. <laughs> the come up is 
starting a whole bunch of shit on Instagram. So, I mean, yeah, BMX Media is great right now. Hopefully, BMX Union can pick up some steam and you guys can check out BMX Union because you can't check out Ride anymore. And obviously, I always support Kurt because he posts most of my videos. <laughs> and that's the last thing I wanted to talk about as far as what I thought was the most important stuff this week. But there's a lot of other things to talk about. So don't stop watching the video. I check out the analytics. I see that you guys drop off in a curve like this. <laughs> The first thing is some contests and jam news, which we haven't really had lately. The first thing there is the 2019 Nowhere BMX Corn Hucket Jam Flyer was released. So you guys can check out the Facebook event page if you want some more details on that. It's in the middle of America, which is pretty central for everyone in America. And it's an absolutely amazing time focused around positivity and just having fun riding bikes and freestyle. And then after that, we had a video recap of the We The People Shop Hops Los Angeles with Oriole Bike Shop. Basically, this video starts out with Grant C and Dan Krupp talking about some We The People battleship frame stuff and Dan talking about his signature stem from We The People. And then it goes into a bunch of riding at a concrete skate park and some street spots. And it looks like everyone had a great time. It's got Grant and Dan in there shredding as well. If that's something you might be interested in, you know where to find it. So then after that, we had some highlights from Simple Session 2019, both street and park coming from Kunstform. And this is what I was talking about earlier. We normally would have had this kind of thing much earlier to talk about, but because Ride was put on halt, they obviously weren't there to film their normal qualifying practice, highlights, all of that craziness that they normally do. They just weren't there to do it. So there were no videos from Ride and I'm sure there were other videos out there, but they just really didn't get pushed that much until this one came out. And so now we can talk about Simple Session 2019. That went down a couple weeks ago and it was absolutely insane to watch. Boyd Hilder took the win as far as BMX Park goes and then Felix Prangenberg won Street. Boyd Hilder absolutely deserved that one. He was doing different stuff than everyone and he was doing such hard tricks consistently and not messing up really at all during his run. He just looked different out there and was killing it on a whole nother level. And when it comes to BMX Street in Simple Session, honestly, it felt like it was just who could land the most tricks without falling. Same with Park, but everyone looked kind of the same. There wasn't really anything out there that was differentiating other than Felix and Matt Ray going crazy and doing a billion tricks in certain places where some people weren't doing them and more of them because they would just they wouldn't have any dead spots in their run constant tricks whereas other people felt like they were just going back and forth and hitting the rails and ledges constantly i guess that's what bmx street is but i don't know it just wasn't that entertaining to me this year. I honestly fell asleep during BMX Street. Then the last thing to talk about this week in the contest and jam section is a Sam City and Fly Bikes release jam highlights video. It's a couple minutes long. I believe Sam City is the name of the skate park and it features Courage Adams and Semcock. So that is the end of contests and jams and that brings us into the videos from this week so when it comes to the videos from this week there weren't really any that i wanted to talk super in depth about but there were a few that i feel like deserve to be mentioned the first of those is called this i have no idea what this says i think it's russian i can't read russian so if you guys know what this says, let me know. Either way though, I watched the video and the description on BMX Union mentioned that he rides somewhat similarly in style to Steven Hamilton. And after watching the video, I definitely see where that's coming from. And even some of the camera work kind of felt like it came straight out of a Hamilton video. So you guys might be interested in checking that one out. There's also a Grant Uberoff Daily Grind 2018 video that came out this week. Another BMX Foo video, this one is called Oh You Think It's a Game, and this is probably the best one that they've put out yet. Charlie and Greg Henry absolutely killed it in this video, and there's another dude, I think his name is Blair, who did like a back tire bonk bump up to nose jam on a sub on a bank to wet, or 
wedge to ledge and it was super awesome. This is definitely the best one they've made recently. Then we had FBM uploading the last section from their Lost in America DVD in a video called FBM Lost in Love. This featured a ton of shredders doing some awesome stuff at skate parks, street setups, literally like 10 different people in this video, maybe more, absolutely killing it. Then there was a video with Andy Buckworth and Anthony Napolitan. It was a Vegas road trip and it was for the Wiener Schnitzel Company. I don't know what it is. Seems like another ballpark Frank type deal. But in the description of the video, the first word is Wiener fam. Regardless of any jokes that I could make about Wiener Schnitzel or the Wiener fam, these guys put in work for this video and it shows. And the last video I want to mention this week is with Adrian Leconte. It's called La French and it's from Fit. And that brings us into the products for this week. And the first thing to talk about here is a video with Kevin Peraza talking about and introducing his new shoe with Vans. Basically, this video is over seven minutes of the most humble person in BMX talking about something that he is extremely grateful for and proud of, and that is his new shoe, which you can see on the screen right now, Kevin with his shoe talking about it. It's pretty cool to see how a company as enormous as Vans is supporting something like BMX and creating a BMX specific shoe after this many years supporting BMX. It's definitely been a long time coming and I'm very interested in hearing how well this shoe performs. After that, we've got a new sprocket from Fiend. This is JJ Palmer's signature sprocket. It also has an option of a bolt-on nylon guard. This sprocket costs $49.99 and it seems like it comes in three different colors, a polished color, black, and a red anodized is what it looks like. We'll just call it red. It's six millimeters thick, comes in 6,000 series aluminum. And as you can see on the screen, it's got a pretty awesome triangle design on it with all those different triangle cutouts. And I think that I prefer the looks of it without the guard on it, which is bolted on with four bolts, by the way. Way. Then after that, we've got a sneak peek at Tall Order's new complete bikes. This is contained within one of Sebastian Keep's vlog style videos. And if you guys aren't interested in watching the entire video leading up to him talking about the completes, you can skip to 10 minutes, 30 seconds of this video. That's where he starts just talking about and introducing the completes. And then throughout the rest of the video, they show them, they have a little bit of like flat ground 180s on what looks like a 16 inch bike and they just go through all of the details and things about the completes so if that's something that you're interested in you can check that out in the description down below next i want to talk about the volume vessel v3 frame which is now available in a disco stew colorway this is brock rayford's signature frame and now you can get it in the pink and black disco stew colorway. Next up, we've got another sneak peek to talk about. This time it's from Ethan Courier and Fit, and it's a sneak peek of the sleeper frame that's going to be coming out from Fit. We really don't have any details about it other than the little snippet from the description in Ethan's post. It says this is just like his old one, but a little longer. So I'm going to leave it at that because there's no details to talk about, and I'm sure that we're going to be hearing about it again soon. That's it for product related news, but that brings us right on into a couple bike checks that we have to talk about this week. The first one comes from BMX Union, and it features Bobby Altizer talking about his bike and his prototype frame from standard which features chainstay brakes but on the bottom of the chainstay and the bottom of the frame similar to the old school gt frames that you might have seen from the past he says in this bike check that his brakes are better than they have ever felt before and there's a couple other interesting parts involved with his bike like some all titanium cranks that are 160 millimeters so if you guys are interested, Bobby is a super solid dude and an absolute lip lord shredder. And I definitely think that he deserves the shine time that he's getting 
thanks to BMX Union. Then after that, we've got another bike check, which I think a few of you might care about. This one is with Steve Crandall and it's from Profile. And that brings us right on into the interview section of the video this week. The first video here is a video called Fit Caught Up with John Nelson. And then we had another Odyssey BMX 10 spot, this time with Travis Hughes. And as long as there's nothing that pops up on BMX Union right now, that's gonna be the last thing that I have to talk about this week. Page is refreshing and nope, we're good to go. So thank you guys for watching this week. If you've made it this far in the video, let me know in the comments because I'm very curious to hear which of you make it to the end of the video because it's only something like 20% of you. If you're new here and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below. I come out with this BMX news video every Friday with tips and tricks videos on Tuesdays and other types of videos and streams throughout the week. I wanna thank you guys again for being here and watching. We've got another video coming up for you tomorrow and uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Goodbye.